in 90 minutes, I'll be starting a match against Ben Feingold. I imagine the match will take probably a couple hours playing four games of rapid chess. So I have about 90 minutes to prepare, mentally prepare, physically prepare, emotionally prepare. Yeah, I could, I could play a 10 minute game. I could take challengers, except no one's challenging me right now. I should play F3. Yeah, maybe I should just listen to chats in terms of what openings to play. Probably not going to play F3 on move one. All right, I'll play Light Valette. We've never played before. Light Valette is one of the like early joiners to a lot of the streams. Okay. Let me lower the volume a little bit. Um, no Stafford Gambit. Ooh. Two years, Eric. Ooh. My son played his first TOTB tournament. Oh, Two nice. Two years old, he won two thirds games. Oh, that's awesome. Welcome back to Brad. Okay, we might have a Stafford Gambit. <laughs> uh, had to give in. Okay, so this is a position a lot of people go wrong. A lot of people play d3 or bishop c4, both of which are very bad moves because of knight g4. So the best move in this position is h3, simply preventing knight g4. Hey, it's Ben and Karen. What's up, Ben and Karen? Man, I'm, I'm leaking all, all the prep of how to refute the Stafford. Opponent plays h5. Yeah, now I can play d3 and I don't have to worry. Yeah, not sure if I'll be playing the, the Stafford against Ben. By the way, we do have the match command. Xlam match. Ben will also be streaming later. And maybe even Karen. Yeah, maybe Karen will be helping out. Um, if anyone's interested in helping sponsor the match, uh, you can email Karen. Nightbot is sharing uh, more information. Okay, so opponent trying to figure out how to destroy my structure. Also, thank you, Gary. Almost missed that. Gary gifting five. I'm old, therefore I'm the underdog. Yeah, Ben was... Ben was born before I was born, which I guess makes him pretty old. There was definitely a point in time where Ben was like probably over 2,000 points higher rated than me. Okay, I'm going to not get mated, defending and kind of attacking. Maybe I should have played bishop e3. I should have played bishop uh, bishop e3, queen b4, a3. Okay, it's too late now. Yeah, now bishop e3, queen b4, the b pawn would be attacked. Mm, let's be solid. There's no increment here, so I have to watch my time a little bit. What's your OTB record against Ben? Uh, not good. I wonder if I can find the game. We played once in, I think it was only once, in an over-the-board classical tournament. And, uh, spoiler alert, he beat me. But it was like, it was a very painful game because I was better most of the game, I think. And then if if I can recover the suppressed memories, I'm pretty sure I, I walked into a fork at some point. Yeah, maybe after this game, I'll I'll do a little bit of digging. About an hour ago, I posted on YouTube uh, a video where I shared a game that I played against Akaro about 14 years ago. It's nice to dig for old games from the past. Okay, I have a nice, uh, nice sort of pawn structure here. I'm thinking, never mind. I was thinking if bishop c4, I would not take the free bishop. I'd play bishop d3, try and get a pawn cube. Not going to happen, though. Was Ben born before the universe was born? It's unclear. Probably not. But which universe? 
Okay, I have to stop looking at chat and focus on this game. I'm up a pawn, but uh, time is dwindling. Some 94 ideas. Oh no, my opponent. Opponent maybe having connection issues. I could give more time. Okay. 15 seconds added. I'm not going to be overly generous, so. Hey, it's chess weeb. I'm a slow reader, so I, like I I see usernames, but I can't like quickly read messages. Oh, uh, C four, A four incoming. Look at my pawn, whatever this is. I on pawn. I could take the pawn three different ways with my own pawns. <laughs> Does opponent give me more time too? Oh, opponent gave me more time too. Wow. Okay. I'll return the favor. Look at my pawns again. Quack. Okay. That was a funny finish. <laughs> Welcome back, Hamster Ham. How did this pawn... How did this even happen? Ah, uh, okay. So this pawn used to be my C2 pawn. And then this pawn, I guess, used to be the B pawn. This pawn... This pawn was my E pawn. This pawn was my F pawn, I think. This pawn was always my D pawn. It's a very rare pawn structure, yeah. Oh, thank you, Life Follett. Yeah, a fun game. <laughs> this is a this is one of the lines which has made me sad over the years. It's it's a very strong response against the Stafford. Um, H five is is one of the trickier moves because it sets up the trick. You can just show the database. If if White plays a move Bishop E two, which is played ten percent of the time. Then, then black is doing really well with queen d4. And after casting knight g4, and this is winning. It's one of my favorite Saffir traps. But yeah, after d3, it's it's harder to crack. There's no increment. Yeah, there there is a little bit of increment there. Increment from kindness. Any Thanksgiving plans? Is there a turkey opening? I don't think there is a turkey opening. I quickly search. I mean, there's a bird. Bird. What about bank? Any openings about thankfulness? Yeah, things. I'll, maybe I'll I'll invent the Thanksgiving gambit, where I take a break from streaming and spend time with loved ones and eat turkey. Maybe some potatoes. If you're just joining, you did not miss the Ben match. No, I went live about eleven minutes ago. I actually wanted to, so I wanted to show, where is it? Let me hide my thing. Because I recently downloaded all of my tournament games that have made it to the database. I guess I should explain. So when you play in a high-level tournament, or when you play in Title Tuesday, which is also a high-level tournament, then your games make it to what's called the Mega Database. And over the years, a lot of my games have made it to this database. Uh, 15, 1,541 games to be exact. And let me show again. So this is a chess space window with all the games people have like public access to in the mega database. And what I can do is control F and then search for Feingold. I'm ignoring colors. So this will search for when Ben Feingold was white or black or any other fine gold I may have played. And we find one game. And yeah, this is uh, the one time we played over the board. Do I dare show the game? 
Uh, let me bring this into a Leech S study. Copy. So I copied the PGN. Eric versus Ben. Okay. And now paste. Okay. So I guess, spoiler alert, Black won this game. And I remember, yeah, when I was... I, I had a little bit of time to prepare for him. And this was back when I was like pretty new to playing the London. What year was this? Why does it say Kingston? This should be St. Louis. This is 2016. And maybe before some people watching were born. We were playing at one of these St. Louis Invitational. It was a GM Norm event. I did not score well enough to get a GM Norm. Correct the typo here. And coming into this game, I was preparing to play the London, which I did. And Ben played G6. And this was before I had like a pretty clear repertoire against G6. But I played Knight C3, which is what I like to play these days. And after Bishop G7, I play E4. And we transposed into a Pierce defense. And in this position, I play the move, which I'm pretty sure I looked at before the game. But these days... I would play a different move. And the move I played in this game is not a move I'm so proud of playing is knight f3. Even though it's a natural developing move and aims to discourage black from playing e5. Uh, the I think the better approach here is queen d2. And this is what I would play normally. And we can see I've played this position almost 500 times on the chess. I don't have any GM norms yet, unfortunately. I mean, Ben Fine will play the role in ensuring that I, I don't have any norms. So after Queen D2, the, the main idea is to castle quickly and play F3, uh, which can better lead to an attack because then white prepares G4, H4, etc. Bishop H6, and usually the knight just stays back, sometimes goes to E2 a bit later. What's the difference between the Pierts and the Kid? Um... Yeah, so King's Indian is usually usually refers to when white plays uh, c4 included. And then this is like the main King's Indian position. But Pierce and King's Indian are very similar because they both feature the setup from black. And usually in Pierce, I mean, Pierce refers to this position where usually white is not committing to c4. So it's a little bit different, but of course there's transpositions as well. Really just a matter of uh, naming things, nomenclature. So going forward in this game, I remember it was pretty early on that Ben surprised me. And it's about to happen. Because here I played the move d5. I had this position once against Little Plotkin. I castled. But I played the move d5 here, thinking that I'm forcing the knight to move. I think I was expecting knight b8, and then uh, maybe he would try and redevelop. But he surprised me here with a move that doesn't involve moving the knight. Maybe he temporarily forgot how the knight moved. But black to move here, and I think he played the strongest move. And I remember being like upset with myself for missing what he could play in this position. Good job to who is Kenya. E5, a counterattack. It's a nice idea. It's like my whole setup originally was to discourage E5. And when I play D5, thinking I'm getting initiative, he just counterpunches. And now I have to decide like, do I move the bishop? And then black gets like a, a standard King's Indian setup. Or do I take, or do I take this way and en passant? I'm trying to remember what I did. I think I en passanted. Yeah, I, I took en passant. I felt forced. This is not my current FIDE rating, unfortunately. <laughs> I was higher rated FIDE back in 2016. This is around my, my peak. And my current FIDE rating is like 2360. It's a lot of a lot of deflation happened over the years. So I took on Poisson. He takes back. Now he has two center pawns. And then I try and complete development. 
save my bishop. And I castle queenside. So I still had some ideas of trying to get this sort of kingside attack, maybe g4, h4 on the horizon. And then he plays b5. So Ben clearly like doesn't care so much about material, but he's caring about open lines. And he's trying to open the b-file so his bishop can coordinate with a rook. And yeah, b5 like kind of caught me off guard, but I ended up just taking the pawn. And then I was up a pawn for a long time. Rook b8, I saved the bishop. My bishop played like a really nice defensive role, but also aggressive role. He played a5. I just go for the trade. And if I can just trade off everything, then maybe I can win in the king pawn ending. Kick the rook. Knight a4, kick it again. I think I had some ideas of knight c5. Like if the rook moves all the way back, this could be interesting. But he plays rook b5. I attack the rook again. And then I do play knight c5. So hitting the bishop. Life feels very good here because black sacked a pawn and it's white getting initiative. He had to retreat. He's following the rule. Always retreat. Thank you, Chimpany. Okay, so now the knight is attacked, so I move back, centralizing. Kind of weird setup, but my pieces are centralized. Plays e5. And yeah, then I have all this pressure on the queen side. The knight is kind of pinned to the pawn. So he plays rook b6. I play knight g5, which is kind of a fancy move because I leave the rook hanging, but if he takes it, I have knight e6. I'm also preparing f3 and maybe g4. So he, again, follows a rule, always retreat. Always play f3, yeah. I think even, even in 2016, Ben was always saying never play f3. So this move felt especially good to play. Except I think I ended up regretting it. So I trade. I win another pawn. I save my knight. He hurts my pawn structure. Now my f3 pawn is kind of weak. He doesn't take it. Why doesn't he take it? I guess he just wanted to leave it being weak. Am I missing something? Oh, maybe he didn't want the f file to open. Like rook f1, and then I'm going to start challenging him. So he plays queen e7 first. I attack this pawn. And I save my f pawn. But then he applies pressure. He's also sneakily threatening queen a2. I create the battery. So if he plays queen a2, I would just destroy him. He plays knight g7. Play knight b4, attacking and covering the square. And I'm still trying to trade, which we do. So I'm up two pawns here, but Ben showed his resilience and resourcefulness. Okay, I followed the rule, always play king b1. And then at some point, yeah, things got uncomfortable because my f-pawn was still weak. He took it. The knight came back. And then he just starts doing the opposite of retreating. Starts moving forward and attacking me. Maybe threatening rook f3 as well. So I play queen f1. Just trying to trade stuff. He plays queen f4. Um, making it so if I do trade, then he'll get like a very strong pass pawn. Or maybe take with a rook and win another pawn. So I play a4. Did I miss rook f1? Rook f1... Good question. Why did I not play rook f1? I think, was I scared of rook f3? I actually don't know. Am I missing something? Or did I miss something in the game? Maybe I was scared of rook f3. But no, queen d7. Ah, oh, it's a really beautiful line. Rook f1? Wow, I'm getting goosebumps just by 
seeing what's about to happen in this line. Black to move. Yeah, it's not super obvious, but it's super beautiful. No, qu queen takes c2, knight takes c2. The queen still defends a rook. Man, Ben had such an evil plan. But I I guess I saw it because I I would have considered rook f1. I'm sure I saw the problem with it. Yeah, good job, Fibonachos, CL Smith, what's up? The move is queen takes e3, sacking the queen. Idea being after takes, takes. At first, it looks okay for white. Seems like the king's surviving. But then black can sacrifice a rook. Rook a1. Driving the king to a1. Can't move up to b3, and then the fork happens. So, that's nasty. So even, even at, at Ben's age, like he's still super tactically sharp. And that's why, okay, that's why I couldn't play rook f1. I had to play queen f1. I really wanted to trade queens. But after queen f4, yeah, here I thought I could just start pushing. Because this queen can't take any of my hanging pawns because then I take his rook. So he plays knight f3. Threatening another very deadly tactic, knight. I assume this is a threat. Or no, he's threatening just to take my knight. I mean, there's there's some ideas of knight d2, but yeah, the knight obstructs this alignment, so queen's no longer pinned to the rook. So I play queen d3, defending everything. And then this pawn falls. And then it starts becoming tricky. I take his d6 pawn, plays rook f7. I play knight d5. He attacks my rook. I move over, so I'm threatening maiden 2. He plays knight g4. I play knight c3. It's still looking good for white. Trying to consolidate, but then he wins another pawn. And now it's essentially turning into a pawn race. Black has a past h pawn and g pawn. I have the past a pawn. So I take this pawn. So now I have three connected passers. He plays queen f6. Play rook d6. Queen f1, king a2. H4. This pawn looks pretty, pretty fast. It's three squares away from queening. I think at this point I was realizing, uh oh, I'm in some trouble. I play queen c8, attacking the knight, also maybe preparing rook d8. He plays knight e3. I play rook d3. He takes my pawn. I play rook d8. Okay, still trying to set up some counterplay. I'm allowing this check, which he plays. And then he plays this check. I'm trying to remember what happened. He plays this check. Am I surviving? Ah, then he plays queen f6. It's a very nice move. Not only covering h8, but setting up a tactic, which I failed to spot. I played a, a very natural move here. I saw he wants to play queen b6, so I played the move knight to d5, attacking and covering the square. But I'm pretty sure this was my losing move of the game. Black to move and hurt me. I'm pretty sure I said don't hurt me during the game, but he didn't listen. He just responded with the truth hurts and then took my rook. Yeah. Sacking the queen, but only temporarily because if I take back, then it's a fork. So queen takes d8 happened. And then I just felt sad. I think I tried to fight on. But yeah, even Ben can win with... uh extra rook yeah he he insisted on sacking the rook and i resigned here because it's made in two after queen c2 or made in one did you wake up in the ambulance no no one even called an ambulance for me it's 
Very, very sad. But it was an important lesson. I think this game showed the importance of like resilience and fighting spirit. I, I clearly had a good position from earlier, like when I took the B5 pawn and had all this initiative. But he was able to keep the game going, able to keep complications, and then was able to generate like all these tricky tactics. Eventually, to which I just crumbled to. Like I, I saw at least maybe some of the initial tricky tactics, but um, yeah, he got so much counterplay later. So anyway, that was my game against Ben. Thank you, Ember. How's it going? Giving ideas if you don't have an opportunity to play the bird opening. Maybe you can dress the knight as a turkey and play the Halloween gambit, or maybe you can dress pawns as turkeys and play the mad cow hee hee. Does, does Leech Us have like um a turkey themed set? Someone should make a turkey themed or Thanksgiving themed set for, for Leech Us. Yeah, they they have the horsey one. And whatever this is, the Anarchy Chess one. Anyway, so yeah, my one game against Ben was uh was painful looking back, but maybe today I can have some revenge. Do I dare check the accuracy of this game? Definitely not a perfect game. <laughs> Let's see. Might take a little bit of time to crunch. Please find a line for 1F3. What is this called? Oh, the barn's opening. Ah, so here we see the graph of the game. So... Oh, I'm already much worse here. I had to play king a3, but knight d5 is a losing blunder. Do puzzle race, it's so fun. I could do puzzle racer. Puzzle storm or puzzle racer? Maybe I'll do like a few puzzle solving things and then then check Ben's openings, maybe do some Q&A. Don't adopt him. This is not an, an adoption match. <laughs> We're only playing four games. Maybe someday in real life though. So Puzzle Racer is where we solve puzzles against each other. Up to 10 players can join. Puzzle Storm is more individual, where uh, time can be added, like the more I get correct. I could do one of each, maybe. i start with Puzzle Storm. My all-time best is 79, which I think I got 79 back during a time where the puzzles were a bit easier. So... Yeah, let's see how this goes. Uh, I guess I can just start with making a move. Okay. Yeah, a lot of these early ones should be easier. Although, maybe it's going to be varied. Oh, that's not legal. Okay. Okay, a few recurring patterns. I will say that, like, Leech Ass Puzzle Storm seems a lot. Like, the puzzles are a lot different than chess.com. I feel like there's just more variety compared to chess.com, like Puzzle Rush. When I do Puzzle Rush, a lot of them are like just take F2 or back rank mates or smothered mates. To take the queen. Okay. Uh, this is mate. Okay. Take here. Yeah, it's important to keep the streak. Uh, what is this? There, there. Trap the queen almost. Let 
Wow. Okay. It was made in two. Uh, they do get gradually more difficult. Well, there's still some easy ones sprinkled in. A train up a lot of pawns. Okay, seven eventually. Good luck with the match. Thank you. To push probably. Yeah, these are getting kind of tricky. I can take. I see two. This is made in two. Push. Okay. I gotta start with this, but then what? There, there. Not seeing it. Okay, I guess I got that one right. There. There's some easy ones there. Yeah, guessed on that one. Got to 62. Yeah, it's not going to be easy to get to 79. Thank you, Alpha Peppers. I do get a little bit of extra time from the from the streak. I guess it shows like my combo was 148. So I guess that means I played 148 moves. Oh, I actually played 149 moves because yeah, my final move was incorrect. So this one, either have to, I guess I just take on F2, not super clear. Ah. Actually, yeah, this is nice because after taking on F2, if white plays this, threatening to queen, I don't play this and I don't play this, I have this. And then queen a1 is mate next move, regardless of what white does. Okay. Thank you, the big rascal. That's the first time sub. So do I switch to Puzzle Racer? Which allows other people to join. Race my friends. Any friends in chat? Let's see if this fills up. 
Oh, the big rascal says, never sub to anyone before, but all I do is watch you on YouTube. Wanted to say thanks. Oh, that's very kind. I really appreciate that. Okay. So, yeah, if you haven't seen Puzzle Racer before, the way this works is, it still puzzles, but I think it's 90 seconds. And Ten, I'm racing nine, people. Eight, seven, six, Here we go. Five, four, my board's three, smaller too, so I have two, to watch my mouse. One, zero. Uh, what is this? Okay, going well so far. Oh, what is this? Ah, I, okay. All right, so that's Puzzle Racer. Maybe similar to Type Racer? Are you still selling merch? Actually, yes. Um, there's a new product in the merch store, which I was going to start promoting. I'm not sure if the Qatar coupon code still works. It might. My puzzle streak record is like just over a hundred. Do we do one more? Could do one more. Yeah, the new product is this. It's a nice sweater. It's an Oh No My Queen sweater, just in time for the holiday season. Super soft. I would be wearing it, but I turned my heat a little bit too high, so have to wait for it to cool down before before I put it on. Maybe I'll put it on later. Okay. Got some opponents. Here we go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay. Oops.
Okay. I want you to use the skip button, but I had to time it properly. Got to 90 there. So I think what I'll do is maybe play um play a chess game. Yeah, so against Ben, I'll actually be playing I think it's 10 plus 3, so we'll have a little bit of increment. Might take a while for <laughs> for me to get a game here. What pieces do you use on chess.com? Um chess pieces. Can check real quick. Uh the pieces are classic. The wood is dark wood. The board is dark wood. Okay. So this is my warm up game. Play knight c3. Bishop b5. It's a line that I've been looking at a little bit recently. Do you try chess inside and lee chess? I haven't used it in a while, but um, yeah, it is a cool feature. So against g6, there's a line bishop g7, take, take. And then rather than moving the knight, okay, assuming pawn takes, I'll play the move queen f3. This is already like a kind of tricky line. Because black has to deal with the mate threat. The most natural move here is e6. I guess I'll hold off on explaining further until my opponent moves. Ooh. Yeah, knight f6 is a move. I can't recall if I've studied this one before. e5 looks really interesting. e5, take. And then if I want, I could just take back and leave the pawn there. Because the knight's pinned to f7. Another approach is knight here or here. Let's try this. Looks interesting. I feel like I should have studied this at some point, but it's been a while. There's a question, do I want to take with this pawn or this pawn? Like generally, it's a bit more common to take towards the center, but in this position, I kind of would like to develop my bishop. Welcome back, we the Colo. Assume maybe you watched the most recent uh, YouTube video. I'm not sure if there'd be any opponents to play on ICC. Although I did stream there maybe a year or two ago. There was like one or two people logged in. A lot of bots logged in. Could be interesting to go back there at some point. Bishop f6. Okay. So it's equal material. I have the double pawns, which does mean I have one extra half one file. I'm debating whether to start with this, which I think makes sense. And then I'll keep the option open, like which way to castle. Because maybe I castle queenside and then go for the h pawn push. Thank you, Warduck and Pazo Avi Aviator. Two new prime subs. So bishop g7. Yeah, I might just go for like takes takes h4. Like Vak already has to be a little bit wary of what's happening. Oh yeah, there's also fix. 
which was which stands for the Free Internet Chess Server. I guess it was basically the Lee Chess of the early two thousands. I think I I had an account there, but I've I didn't really play there apart from Bug House. It's like the main place to play Bug House back in the day. Okay, there's g4 here. Although, if I play g4, I have to calculate d5. And then takes, I sack a bishop. Probably no good. Now, I like the idea of just casting and then gradually preparing g4. Like, move the queen, play f3, and... I feel like it, it probably should be easier to attack on the king side for me yeah let's go for this thank you for your chess appreciate the raid hope you had a good stream thank you bracken dawson too heinz subscription um heinz heinz like the ketchup or heinz like some word in german that i don't know what it means <laughs> Yeah, if you're just joining, I'm actually playing the first game of the stream. I started the stream with some puzzles, with some story of the first time I played Ben Feingold over the board. But now it's uh, it's more competitive chess now. Opponent wants to hurt me. So I'll play this. I'm getting off the diagonal, also moving out of the way of the pawn. F3, G4 is probably the major plan. Are you affiliated with Lee Chess? I actually don't know what like what that refers to. I stream on Lee Chess, but I'm not like a I don't really get paid by them. I don't have an exclusivity agreement with them. Yeah, Lee Chess is a nonprofit and um I, I just use their website. There's been a few times where I've uh I've streamed on the Lee Chess channel. So in those cases, I guess I was affiliated with Lee Chess, but yeah, it's a, it's a great place to play. Have you seen any interesting animals lately? I love the variety of questions from Twitch chat. Can't recall the last interesting animal I saw. Usually when I see an interesting animal, I take a picture of it. But apart from like dogs walking and some birds, I saw a rabbit the other day. I didn't snap a photo though. So queen c7. Attacking the bishop. This kind of does make me choose. Like, do I want to keep the bishop on this diagonal or move it to this diagonal? Or even play bishop e2, which could help repair g4, maybe transfer it to this diagonal. Some choices. Could also defend the bishop. Queen d4, rook d4. Bishop d3 seems like the most natural. It does allow for bishop e6, king b1, but I think that's okay. Well, queen c5 might be coming. Even then, it should be okay. I think it's important not to overthink things too much. I guess queen c5 right away, I take the pawn. So with bishop e6, then I have to figure out what's going on. Bishop b6, can I take here? Take and then check. I mean, it's at least a draw. Is it more? Okay, time to calculate. So take, if pawn takes, I take, rook takes. It should be good, like g4 in that line. So take, king take, check here, check here. And then rook d3, bishop f5, bishop comes back. No, bishop f5, I just take it. So after rook d3, the king can be here or here. My queen's here. I play rook d3. What is black doing? f6 doesn't help. Rook g8, I play rook g3, king f8, queen h6, king e8, I take. It doesn't help as well. I think I just go for it. It's a weird tactic. 
but stems from the fact that this pawn was a little bit overworked. I'm not scared of this because I, I scoop up the H pawn. And I think this other line, I mean, I didn't spend too much time calculating pawn takes and then rook f2. But after g4, then like, things are opening up on the king side. I guess I could continue calculating rook f6, queen e4. And then the queen is tied down to this pawn and this pawn. And then the g file or h file are guaranteed to open. Always repeat. Okay. <laughs> so play rook d3. And yeah, I, I don't see what black is doing here. Rook h8, which I didn't acknowledge, gets mated in two. Rook g3, king f6, queen g5. Queen c5 is a funny line. Okay, this line I had mentioned, uh, I'll win the rook with queen h6. Oh, there's king f6, though. Wow. Oh, maybe it's not so simple. I didn't calculate king f6. Okay, life goes on. Queen here, bishop f5. And then rook g5. I'm going to win back the piece, I think. Always repeat. <clears throat> there. I have to repeat once. So question, do I play queen h6 or queen f3? Rook g5, queen c6. No. Rook g5, e6, g4, queen c6. Take, take, take. I have to go for it. I might be in trouble here. But it's super interesting. So I did win a pawn in the process. I'm probably I'm probably gonna win the bishop back, but have to lose a pawn back. So this may be like one big fancy trade. If black takes and then takes. But then the king's tied down to the bishop. If takes, I have rook h5. King e6, I have rook e1. King g6, I have rook h6. So the line I'm looking at is this, this, this. And then take, take, take. Take, 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 take. And then it's equal material. And then my rook activates. It's still a three-result game. Queen c5, I have g4 now. I think e6 was probably better for black. Because now it's hard for black to force a queen trade. And this king is going to be a lot more of a target than my king. Hopefully. Hopefully. Time is treating me well, too. Yeah, there's no increment here either, so take. I think it's working out. If takes, the rook can come in. And black has five legal moves. Thank you, Zvush. Hey Imrosen, hey. thanks for 10 months of great content. Let's go Imrosen, let's go Imrosen, angry goose, Imrosen, angry goose, Imrosen, angry goose. Let's go. Yeah, my pawns are basically angry gooses to this king. Ready to pounce any moment now. F6 is hard to stop. 
a pawn takes its maiden too. Okay, what's the cleanest way here? Check. Check. Uh, I guess I just take and take. Queen e5, I have queen f6. Oops. Okay, I have this move. Okay. <laughs> I was oblivious to queen g1. But uh, yeah, pawn was promoting. Okay, it was a nice game. Got a little bit uh, weird. I went for this bishop g6 line, not having like done the calculations super accurately, and my opponent probably found the best response was to to play rook g8 and then king f6 because I had only looked at king f8. Can you analyze queen h6? Queen h6 here. Ah, then I have this. And then this. Yeah, the problem here is my queen's attacked. And I don't think taking leads to enough. It's nice the king is out, but it's just probably not enough fuel for the fire. Can you analyze h5? Yeah, I missed h5 in so many moments. Uh, let's see. Stockfish will know best. Engine says... Okay, engine approves. Although engine just likes white's position. Rook de1. I guess rook de1 kind of prepares us. But bishop g6 is fine to play first. Okay, so rook f3 or queen h6 are both good. So how does this work? Here, here, here. Ah, queen h5 preparing g4. Okay. That's nice. Yeah, g4 is a common move in a lot of these lines. But during the game... Ah, uh, yeah, so I played queen f3, which I guess concedes advantage a little bit. Because Bach has e6 here. And then I was looking at this line. g4, queen c6, I have to take, take. Ah, here I can take first. Still a little bit better for white with this pass pawn. Okay, I'm going to take a small break. And I'll be back momentarily. And the match is starting in about 15 minutes, so... When I get back, I will prep, switch over to chess.com and hopefully get in the zone. So stay tuned. Okay, so I'm going to switch sites. So I think what I would like to do is search for my opponent's games. Yeah. I think this is his chess.com username. Will I show my heart rate? Oh yeah, I could do that. My watch is 27%. That should should allow it to be alive for the next couple of hours. This is funny. So this is Ben's opening tree. I'm using uh, chess.com slash explorer, which is basically chess.com's built-in opening tree. Type in a username and find all their, basically find all, all their games and see their, their tree of moves. So these are all of Ben's games when he's white. And when he plays e4, he wins 94% of the time. I think that's because he plays e4 against like beginners. Because it's the best move to try and win quickly. 
Maybe he plays like d4 against more experienced players. I guess I should check both moves. Has he encountered the Stafford Gambit? Oh, he likes to play the Danish. <laughs> yeah, this might be hard to prepare for. Like, he just plays everything. Should I prepare for this? A lot of my opponents in the speedrun series have been playing this, so I feel adequately prepared. What's his most frequent opening? Uh, E4. I guess the, the Danish is his most frequent. I don't think it's likely he'll play the Danish. Also, what does he do against Sicilian? Smith Mora, of course. So what about D4? D4. I think he has like a course on D4. Queen's Gambit. What if I play the elephant trap? Say, oh no, my pawn. He never, he never takes. There's a funny trap here. If white takes and then takes on d5, thinking that it's free, black can actually win material by taking back, sacking the queen, and then winning it right back. This is a well-known opening trick. I don't think I'll fall for it, though. Yeah, this is just overwhelming. So he's, he's played over 10,000 games just with the white pieces. And as black, he's played over 10,000 games. So against e4, he's playing c5. Actually, let's check his repertoire here. Bishop b5, knight d4, knight f3. Okay. But every line, he plays everything. So what to do? Oh, what's my record? Yeah, I should look at games I played him before. We've played a, a good number of times. Most recent recent time being 10 second chess. I'll just download this. So these are my games against Ben. I'm using chess base because it's the most easy, easy way to scroll through the games. Like easier than uh, in chess.com. So let's just reconfigure this. Now, this was a three minute game in 2018. Oh, so he allowed. Wow. Wait, let's look at this real quick. I haven't installed Stockfish 16 yet in chess base. I just want to check this theory here. Apparently d3 is best. d3, let's say knight e7, f4, knight g6. Okay, this side I would be comfortable with playing. Oh, I forget the Budapest against him. That's kind of funny. Yeah, we played a few of these same lines. Ah, he played bishop. Okay, let's check this game. So he played like a um, kind of a bad Torre. The Torre is similar to the London, but it's instead of bishop f4, it's bishop g5. But in this move order, bishop g5 is not supposed to be great because of knight e4. But this is still a tricky line. Yeah, the, the f6 emote seems to be working. f6 is actually a, an idea in some positions like this. Engine likes queen b6. If I had more time, I would like prepare more seriously. Maybe check this against his, his opening tree. Let's see if he's ever had that position. So I'm filtering through all his white games. I'm basing this off of 
the time we played back in 2019. He played bishop g5. I played knight e4. But he already plays a bunch of moves in this position. So knight c3, queen a5. Wow. Yeah, I don't think I'll be predicting what opening he's going to play, unfortunately. Were those bishop moves a waste of Tempe? Yeah, the bishop moved twice, but my knight also moved twice. And I guess the point of this opening is uh, white tries to exploit the fact that the knight's on e4. Like knight d2 or knight c3 will challenge the knight, and it does get tricky. But objectively, it should be fine for, for black. Let's see. So we played a decent amount. I played in London. Ooh. Oh, I played this one. Oh, ben beat me in this game. Some Nimzo. Yeah, Ben's been playing chess for a long, long time. He's capable of playing like a lot of different openings. Knight F6, wait. Do I know what you're playing against Knight F6? Yeah, I am supposed to take on c6. Yeah, bishop c6 is fine. f4 is fine. Yeah, I don't think I would mind like these sort of Grand Prix setup positions. Engine likes knight or pawn e5 and then knight a4. Nice idea. Okay. All right, let me close my chess base windows. Okay, so uh, we'll be starting very soon. I think Ben is ready. Um, let me figure out how to send a challenge. So if you're just tuning in, or if you forget what I said earlier, this is going to be a four-game rapid match against Grandmaster Benjamin Weingold. We are both streaming. Uh, shout out to, uh, to his channel. Go follow. I don't think I have the Ben command. It's Ben and Karen on Twitch. And how do I do this? Play friend. They should have a play enemy button. Even though we're we're more friends than enemies. Okay, so time control is going to be ten plus three. Random color. Okay, here we go. Yeah, shout out to Ben. Playing e4 on move one. And we have a Sicilian. Okay. I was just preparing this a little bit. We've played this line in the past. He's played e6 in the past, also knight f6. But he's playing knight d4. So we'll see what he has up his sleeve. G6. It's funny, earlier in the stream, I had a, a line, or I had a game in exactly this line. I didn't analyze it like super closely, but I did get a good position. Let's see how much he knows here. Turn down the move volume. Yeah, this is a line that I learned about 10 years ago. Not quite before Ben was born, but it's a line that I got a few times in like over the board classical tournaments. And there's a common mistake here that if black plays e6, then knight b5 is very strong. So yeah, these are probably the two main moves. I did prepare this in Qatar, even though 
the person who I was preparing it against didn't go into it. I was preparing this line for Josiah Stearman. Uh, wow, Ben plays E6, so maybe not familiar with this line. And the main point is after Queen A3, yeah, Black's already under some big pressure. There's not too many ways to defend the pawn. There's King E7 or Bishop E5. Thank you, a bag of fritos. I really won't be looking much at the chats. I do want to stay focused here. So we see king e7. I'm pretty sure c3. Like I vaguely remember some how ye fawn game. I'm really sure I, I shared a, the how ye fawn game in my lecture for the St. Louis Chess Club back in 2017. I gave a one hour lecture on how to crush the Sicilian with knight c3 on move two. I showed this exact trap, I'm pretty sure. Pawn d3. Confusing the audience. Pawn d3, I can take it and then knight d4. I mean, I don't have to move the knight. I could start with c4 too. Like, there are options here. Let's focus. But knight d4 seems like very fine. Um, yeah, I'm calculating like knight d4, e5, knight c2, bishop e6, knight e3. I spent a lot of time moving the knight, but up a pawn. I don't think I should overthink things too much. An e5, yeah, e5 does concede the d5 square a little bit. So the idea would be to get the knight to e3, and maybe eventually play pawn f4 and try and exploit the king in the center. And box developing. Yeah, it's such an ugly configuration of pieces. So I have to untangle a little bit. Yeah, knight, knight e3 is a move I'll play eventually. Okay, so black wants to tuck away the king. I could play f3. Bishop c4 is an option. No, bishop c4 is hanging in the pawn. And bishop b5 is kind of interesting. Bishop b5, bishop d7. Take, take d3. Yeah, maybe bishop b5 is the way to go. Of course, uh, there's this pin, so... And really, the bishop was just in the way of things. Like, I want to play d3 and someday develop my dark square bishop. Like, maybe some d4 idea. Okay, let's take. And this b6 square is very tender. But can I make use of it? Knight c4? Knight c4 does attack a few different things. Yeah, knight c4 is kind of cool, actually. Knight c4, queen e6, though. I'm also calculating knight c4, queen c7. If I take king f8... Some issues with the pawn. So maybe just d3. Yeah, let's go for d3. Now knight c4. So threatening this and this. Rook d8 was kind of forced. And the idea is to play this. 
And basically what I'm trying to achieve, uh, queen g4 I take, I just want a position where I trade off bishop for knight and then get the knight to d5. And if I'm up a pawn and have a good knight versus not so great bishop, then life should be good. Yeah, it took some time I'm down on the clock, but okay, he gets off the diagonal of the queen. He wants to play d5. Now I should be in time to take. I could even start with this. Maybe I just start with this. Just leaving the pin. Yeah, I do have to manage time. But pretty good start. Wants to play B5. Okay, let's just take... Oh, he wanted to move the knight, but of course I don't allow it. Bishop here, maybe h4. And the bishop would be tied down to defending against knight f6. We'll probably see f5 at some point. Like maybe it's worth queen b3. But queen b3 can probably wait. We'll just castle. I mean, it's a dream position. He's moving quickly. Wants to play f5. Now queen b3. I am trying to find a plan here, though. Like going forward. I want to trade queens, probably. Like maybe a5, a4. f5 is coming. Knight b6 is a move. Yeah, maybe I can start with knight b6. I'm just tickling the queen. If queen c6, then I go for this, and then eventually queen d5. And there's ideas of eventually queen d5, knight c4 as well. Pressure the pawn. Okay. And yeah, f5, I can't really stop. So, and do I want to play f4? Start with queen d5, knight c4. It's weird. Maybe not the best approach. Trying to tie down black to d6. Some a4. Always play f3. He's getting counterplay though. It's a little bit unsettling. I have to play f3 here. There's some idea to lift the rook over. There, there. It's probably worth it. Because not only will, we, I will I be targeting uh, b7, I'll be targeting d6 if I can get in rook b6. Um, maybe at some point I play d4 and try and basically destroy the base of the pawn chain. It feels a little bit risky the way I'm playing this, though. OK. 
Okay. So I I have initiative now. H5 was not making a direct threat. If rook d7, I play this. And if that gets all tied down, you can imagine there's something. Maybe I, I eventually go for knight a5. So now if I take, I think I can, can I get away with rook takes, 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 takes. Because the queen's overworked. Question, rook takes or knight takes? Probably rook takes. Okay, this worked out. <laughs> it was scary. Like, if I didn't get counterplay, maybe if he somehow like held on to the pawns more effectively, it would have been scarier. But this is, this is a crucial pawn to win because now e5 is probably going to be the next victim. And if we trade, then maybe my knight gets to f5 as well. So yeah, this game, I, I think I was fortunate to catch him in an opening that. Uh, he definitely wasn't familiar with this this queen f3 line from early on. Okay, still takes work. Um, actually, yeah, let's I'm trying to be accurate here. If I take. I mean, I think the tactics work. I'm threatening the rook and knight g6. If takes, 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 takes. Oh no, bishop takes. I. And maybe just d4. D4 looks pretty good. Queen c7. I take. Yeah. In positions like this, you always have to be aware of potential danger, like the bishop aligned with the rook, but just trying to open this rank. I also just want to get the knight to e5. I think it's a nice idea. I could take with queen. Taking with pawn should be fine. And there's an idea like b5, knight e5. If I allow this and I win, win back more. I think this is a quality, like, maybe a lot of people don't realize with Ben is he, he can be very tricky in, um, like, when he has a losing position, he's super resourceful. It can be super hard to actually close out. So you just have to be extra alert. Yeah, okay, so now 95 is looking good. I'm looking for other tactics, but I like the looks of this. I leave the rook hanging, but this rook's attacked. Rook g7. Rook d7 is coming. Trying to ensure there's no counterplay. Queen e6, I probably then take. Queen b4. Knight d3. Take. Like here I'm spoiled for choice. Knight d3. Maybe just take first. Mm. Maybe rook f7 too, man. 
lot of good looking options. Imagining some ninety seven, nine of six. I'm expecting this move. Uh, got a little bit too low on time. This can be a weakness of mine too, is converting winning positions. I'm threatening this and this now, so Bishop e7, queen f5, just looking for the put away. Queen e5, knight c5, Oh my gosh. I can't believe I did that. Do I just let everything crumble. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. Ah. What did I do wrong? Oh, was such a good position. Even like... Yeah, he just kept surviving. Then g3 and I had back rank issues. I should have just played like queen f1 probably. Okay, good game. That was rough. Ah. <laughs> uh. I'm going to have to avoid the tilt. Yeah, even taking the bishop. I mean, queen takes. But what to do?
I think I played the first part of that game pretty well. Okay, this is my elephant trap. Maybe we'll transpose into Cambridge Springs, yeah. Okay, bishop b4. Yeah, I'm having like flashbacks from our, uh, or to our o over the board game. Something very similar to that happened. Okay, so I will say I, I prepared this a little bit off stream. I know that he was likely to enter this. I don't think he's ever encountered this move before, like OTB or online. So he's had this position maybe close to 10 times. The main move is castling, but uh, yeah, e5 is a more confrontational move. I think e5 is like, it's a bit more in the spirit of the Cambridge Springs too. The Bogolugov. Oh, Bogolugov is maybe knight d2. Yeah, so the idea is black is temporarily sacking a pawn. But this pawn is probably going to be hanging long enough for me to recapture. And now I'm exploiting the, the pressure against the knights. Neither of which is pinned, but whichever knight takes, then the other knight will be pinned. It's kind of a confusing position because there are three attackers against e4, only one defender. But white can't actually win the pawn because of this, this tension. Meanwhile, I'm also hitting the bishop. This pawn's still hanging. So nice to be in opening prep again. Hopefully I can, I can play a better full game this time. Okay, so yeah, take. Now the fifth rank is opened. Queen can't take, it's tied down to defending. We see queenside castling. Now I'm trying to remember, am I supposed to take on F2? Very nice C5. I feel like I've studied this position at some point. There's also castling as well. Okay, let's take some time to calculate. Take, take. I think I am supposed to take on e2. And then castle. I'm not sure. Let's calculate. Take a2, take castle, threatening e5, so f4. Knight c5, take, take bishop d3. It doesn't look that great, though. If I take on e5 right away, there's also castling right away, too. Like, maybe I just stay flexible. But then a3. I guess knight takes, I have queen b1. That doesn't work, though. Knight c5, knight c5, king b1, bishop f5, a3, that doesn't seem to work, it's interesting though, take there, I think I'm going to take on a2. So there's a line here. Um, knight takes e4. I can't take back because I get mated. So knight takes e4, I castle. I'll be threatening this. So white naturally plays f4. And then I play knight c5. And then I'll be threatening knight b3. 
And then the point is after knight c5, white takes, I take, I'm hitting e3 because the pawn is here. I guess white has f5 there, but then oh, maybe I, I include h6 and ensure that the bishop can't come back. I feel like I've I've looked at this line at some point. Because now I am, I'm having vague memories of the bishop coming back to f2, which probably means it's it's possible I throw in h6 and then knight c5. I mean, white doesn't have to defend the pawn, but it's probably an important thing to hold on to. He could consider this move, then I take. It's getting super sharp. Yeah, so now it's a question, do I throw in this move or do I play this immediately? Because so if I play this immediately, take, take, f5, are there any tactics like queen, queen b1 and bishop? Bishop f5, no. So I kind of like the inclusion of, of h6 and knight c5. And bishop f2. Yeah, bishop f2, I have bishop g4. Yeah, let's play h6. So really the point is, I want to go for this, but I don't want white to have this move f5. Bishop b7 is off limits. I'm pretty sure I, I prepped this um, several months ago. I haven't reviewed it recently. I'm also pretty sure there's been like a few master level games like that have gone into this line. So I'm having some memory, like black challenges a rook. And there's some important note at the end of the line, like after bishop g4, let's say rook d2 here and then take, black's supposed to start with queen a1 before recapturing. If we might go into it. So the second game in a row I'm having like deep opening prep. I mean, yeah, the, the looming idea of queen a1 is really nice, like from a tactical standpoint. I'm playing bishop g4 quickly here. And I don't think it matters which rook I move. Oh, maybe it does. Maybe I'm supposed to play rook ad1 or rook ad8 so white doesn't take with check. So how does the line go? Rook, rook d2, rook d8, take, is it rook d8? Wait. Yeah, I think it is rook d8. Because if, if I take back right away, white has time for bishop d3, and then queen a1, queen b1. So after rook takes g8, I play queen a1, queen a1 first, forcing queen b1, we trade, and then I take back, and then the bishop is trapped. And if h3, I probably have rook d1, king c2, bishop e2 to win the exchange. Yeah, I looked at these lines a, a while ago for this. Uh, it's a course that I'm still working on against 1d4. Um, first time getting this in a game. So he's clearly realizing the danger and trying to find a, a different move. It's actually super clever. So if I take, take, uh, I don't wanna, don't wanna give him so much satisfaction. Uh, I'm probably supposed to take at some point, but. Queen b1 there, check back. Could take with the rook and play rook to eat again. There's also some b4 idea or b5 idea. 
B5. Hmm. I'm looking for something more clear, but probably worth starting with. Let's start with Chuck. My confidence has been lowered from the previous game, so I, I know this should be good for me, though. I mean, take, take. I could put the bishop on e4. Pawns want to be on dark squares. Do I have f6? f6 might be the key move. Like, take, take, take everything, and then f6. Because white's just underdeveloped enough. Always play f6. Because now if this bishop develops, then I take, and then there's like both pawns are pinned that I can recapture. There's h3, but then I check and then take. And then probably something like bishop d3 in the end. Like I just want to trade off light squared bishops. In position like this, uh, black pawns should find their way to dark squares too. Okay, so now I take, I should take and then check and then bishop e4. I'm trying to slow down development of these pieces. Rook g1 may be coming. I mean, c5 would be nice if it somehow works. The problem is c5, d5, so I have to start with a move like rook f5. Even rook, rook d8. Or this, like, I mean, this makes my intention very clear. But now I think, I mean, we might see b4. b4 is looking at a5, and then take, and then, and then c5. And then take, and then take. It's three on one, but the pawns are a bit crippled. Realizing b5 is a move too. Do I play this maybe? Just preparing the eventual c5. <coughs> b5 c5 take 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 yeah because eventually i'll have bishop d3 hopefully take take maybe just a5 Saving c5 for later. It'd be nice to open the b file as well. Okay, so now c5. He doesn't have to. Mm. Let's start with this. So I'm coming off the king, threatening rook b1. Bishop b2 is probably necessary. I may even have bishop b1 there, but I think just pushing. It's also a move. C5 now. 
my only chance to like ruin the structure. I mean, it should be easy to get the rook behind the pawn. So also no, it takes takes bishop f four skewers, but then I have rook d eight. Wow, I miss d five. Rook b three. That's not good. <laughs> I might not win this. Take. Yeah, because now I do get skewer in it. I might lose this, man. Still tricky, though. Ah, that was a mouse slip. Ay. Not that it matters. Wow. Ah. Oh, good game. Another, like, tricky moment. C5 was not a good move, though, allowing D5. And then I think here, like, I probably should have played Rook E8 and get the Rook behind the pawn. But even this, it's like, it's probably already preferable for white. Yeah, I was scared of allowing king e4 and then d5, but I guess I just have to start pushing the pawn. Okay. Well, in order to draw the match, I need to win the next two. Also, what was I supposed to do after rook d4? Okay, we're going to take a break too. I think we're probably both in need of a break. I was excited to get this line. Maybe I can show the database too. I'm not sure if the game will be in the Lee Chest database. 
Let's see. But yeah, no games in Master's Database. I feel like I studied this at some point, though. Um, yeah, let me just switch over back. Ben is streaming the match. Yeah. Um, link is in the Twitch chat. He should be streaming. Yeah, it was a big opening success. <clears throat> it took some time for me to like remember the prep. Because uh, we went into one of the more like critical lines. F4 is very natural here. But then already it's it gets ugly for white. Will you ever do speedrun games while live? I did it once. I think it's it's easier to do pre-recorded. Although, yeah, maybe if I have energy after this match. I'm not sure if that will be the case though. <laughs> Engine likes keeping queens on the board, keeping the rook on d4. <clears throat> but this is also one of the best lines. Yeah, I was happy when I played f6. I didn't consider g5. And then, yeah, it's a tricky position, even still. A5, take, take. Yeah, C5 was really just a turning point. I even, like, I was aware of lines where takes, takes, and then here. But somehow D5 didn't register that, like, I can't really take. But I kind of have to take now because if I don't take, I'm like much worse. Yeah, rook b3 is also playable. I guess with the same idea to eventually give back the exchange. But it would be very similar to what we got in the game. And then... Yeah, originally when I went for this line, I thought I could play rookie four and then just trade pawns, but he just has here, here, and here. And then it's much worse for black. Rook b3 before. Yeah, I guess rook b3 was playable at some points, but requires a follow-up. So yeah, with this, what was my final mistake? I did mouse it towards the end, but it's probably like very close to losing. Because white's just so much quicker. Somehow king d6 saves me. I didn't play king d6 because rook d7 and then... Am I just in time though? c7, I have h3, wow. Wait, c7, h3, then take? h2 here? Ah, king d6 is coming. Like trying to understand this position, yeah. I just queen. Uh, I win d5 in the end. Queen here. Okay. Oh, uh, yes, I'm ready.
Okay. Some end game lessons to take away there. Very difficult position to play with low time. So, uh, I think the rematch was sent. Okay. I'll play e4. So, I might as well repeat the same opening we had the first game. He plays a6. I should have prepared this. He's going to play e6, f4, b4. Oh, he plays g6. Um, I'm debating now. Bishop e3. I shouldn't take too long, but it could still be interesting. Oh, this double fee and cattle line. Yeah. Basically, just trying to choose a setup. Play something a bit standard. Okay, Ben one connect four. A game over now. Yeah, this is pretty typical uh close Sicilian position. Uh wanna play bishop e three, but b two hangs. And there's a few moves I can start with. Rook b one, h three, maybe just h three. I'm preparing g4, knight g3, etc. It's interesting to be in a must win situation. It doesn't change too much. Like, I try and play every game to win. All right, so g4. Anything to be concerned about? Let's go for g4. <clears throat> In f5, I'll probably hold off Ahana. Start with knight g3. Yeah, this is the first game. It's not like any sort of deep opening prep. It's just uh, a kind of typical formation for both sides. Maybe it's possible like black could castle queenside. Which, yeah, queen d7 kind of indicates. So I kind of would like to play rook b1, just over defending the pawn so my bishop can develop. And in the event of casting, like maybe at some point a3 or c3. Okay, so f5 is maybe one plan for black. I could start with g5, it's kind of interesting. <clears throat> so also bishop e3, f5, take once. Or just leave all the tension. A bit more drawn to g5. Like clamping down a little bit. It's also looking at if e5, okay, if e5, or if uh, d5, there's some idea of e5, but I probably keep the pawn here. 
But there's some fantasy about like playing e5 and then getting the knight to f6. In some distant future. But in the meantime, yeah, there's some H pawn push ideas. F5 still in the air as well. But it is a question like how to deal with this. Because taking, taking, yeah, I don't really want the center to open too much. I play e5. I have five I take. It's kind of interesting actually. Yeah, I think I, I think it actually makes sense. Originally I was gonna keep the pawn on e4. But now my pawns are happy. Smiling. And I still have this h5 break, maybe like someday transferring the heavy pieces to the h-file. But there's also this idea, which isn't easy for Bach to stop. Like he might go for h5 at some point. But h5 I can take. There is a typical move sometimes in these positions, black will play d4, but then I have knight e4, and then I can more easily get to f6. Okay, so we see knight f5. <laughs> yeah, so if I take, then the downside is I can't easily get to f6 with a knight, unless via like g3, h5. So also the yeah, the e-pawn could take. So maybe I'm better off just playing queen e1. Queen e1, there is knight d4. If I take, take... That's uh, not so simple. I should really look into this line, because if he takes this way, still h5 ideas. Bishop could get stuck. Yeah, I don't like the line, queen, queen e1, knight cd4. I'll take h4. There's a funny situation. If I get my pawn to h6 and he has to play bishop h8, then then the bishop's just stuck forever. He's not gonna allow it. Like bishop f8 is not possible. I think I still go for this though. Oh, he wants to play knight d4, so maybe let's start with this. Then he has d4. Maybe c3. No, let's play h5. Really have to watch my time. Knight's coming to e6. Queen e1. Idea this, 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 and then take and then checkmate. Probably not going to happen though. Trying is the first step to failure. Okay. Bishop D2. Mm. 
Let's play this first. Yeah, it's easier to play with black. Bishop d2. I mean, even if I get a rook here, just bishop f8 and I have nothing. I'm actually trying to figure out like a different plan. I might have to just focus on the queen side. <clears throat> Maybe king, king h2, king g3. Because there is a, a possibility of tripling up, uh, making a gun. Rook b8 signifies that he's slow playing a little bit. So b3, take, and c3. Very close position now. I mean, either pawn break, I, I close down things further. Bishop probably wants to be on e2. King wants to be on g3. Rooks want to be here. So ideally, I know my next, like, six to seven moves and take and still pressure play king g3 first yeah problem is rook a2 not the most pleasant bishop e3 bishop e3 there's d4 What if I take first? And Bishop F1. Pairing this and then this. Maybe even like some Bishop D1 eventually. He's playing this position well, though. Like Black just has better pieces. I guess he has Knight at Fate, too, if he just wants to be super solid. So I start with Rook H2. No, let's start with this. Could play rook h1 now. <clears throat> rook h1. That's still a problem, though. Okay, rook f1. Yeah. The problem is I don't quite know what to do. Shut there. Queen H one, I guess. Just have to hold my ground. I think maybe D four was a. Uh, yeah, maybe I should have been looking to play d4 sooner. The problem is it closes everything down. But maybe that's what I want. d4, bishop a6. Yeah, 
Yeah, like now D4. Oh, D4 just hangs. If bishop e3, d4, take. I've pretty much given up on the h file. It's kind of sad, but what to do? There's pressure against f4 as well. Bishop e3, d4, take. Actually, bishop e3 is probably one of the main ideas now. Just a slightly more active square. Maybe queen c1? Should also keep in mind queen h2 and rook h1. Try and time it right. So it does play d4, so take. Take, take. Ah, that's the point. If I... Question, where to put the bishop? Bishop f2. There's some bishop d5 idea now. That may have been a decent transformation for white. Knight c5 looks scary, but okay, I defend attack. Got the two bishops too. Um, I have to defend. <clears throat> I see five bishop e two. It's not pretty. Actually, do I have bishop d five? Take take. Well, now I have bishop d five. Idea bishop c4. Yeah, now b3 is a, a weakness. Not that I want to take it right away. Wow. If I take, what's the, ah, if I take, if I take the knight first. Up a piece now.
Yeah, it's going to be a draw. Unless he blunders this. <laughs> uh... This is called the Philidor position. So this is a very classic draw. Um, the, the idea is I just wait for the pawn to push, and once the pawn pushes, then I start giving checks. I could have traded rooks too, but if I trade rooks, then I don't have any more winning chances. <laughs> He's trying to find a way to um, to prove this endgame theory wrong. But yeah, OK, classic draw. Wow. I was up a bishop, but like, how do I actually win? Because my bishop can't easily get to d4. If I played c5, I think that I'm stuck. Maybe I had to like go for some weird maneuver bishop e7. I really didn't see anything other than bishop a3 though. And then here, yeah, I guess I can allow rook f3, but it was probably already a draw. Let's say I have rook here. So the match is officially over. I think we'll still play a fourth I'm game though. Rated on Lee Chess. Hello. Do you have any tips on reaching two thousand? Um, don't worry about rating. Focus on learning, and as you. As you play more and learn more, the rating will come naturally. Yeah, this position was very winning, but have to analyze later. Okay. At least I didn't lose that. I was getting outplayed in the middle game. Okay, let's see if he deviates. Because the previous game he played an opening that... Uh, I was very well prepared in. All right, so now we have a Queen's Gambit exchange. Um, I'll play this line. Let's see. Uh, let's see if he's done any work in this line. It's what I like to call the Casa Corley variation. He's delaying Queen C two, but only delayed it so much. There is a trap here of this and this. Bishop g3 is a move. It's a move to take. And then knight a6. And I think after casting, I was supposed to play h5. I had a position like this, I believe it was in Vegas, the uh, 1000 GM tournament. May have been the exact position. Yeah, my opponent played h3. The idea is. Just have to make sure. I'm pretty sure here, here, here. Like, knight f5 is not supposed to be a good move. Now I can play knight e6. And then there's some idea, like, eventually knight h5, and here, and here, and here. 
try and attack on the king's side. I'm pretty sure knight h5 right away. And the nice thing about black's setup is this knight can't really access f4 or g3. f4 is maybe some idea, but then it does weaken g3. So I have more time than I started with. I mean, this is basically the extent of my preparation is um, this this middle game idea of bringing the knights to the king's side. With rookie one, it's usually a sign he's going for some central expansion. Other plan for white is to go for the minority attack, which I guess white still could go for. Dreaming of like this and then take and then knight f3 and queen comes in. That's something to keep in mind. Okay, he plays e4. So e4, I would like to take and win a pawn. Yeah, think about Ben. He's not so materialistic. Like He's so nonchalant with just giving up his pawns. And this one I don't fully... Oh, maybe now I understand. So it takes... Bishop would take, 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 bishop h7. Okay. My rook would hang in the end. I, mean, I can take once, or I can play knight f4. Or I can play queen g5. If, if, okay, if knight takes, then he doesn't have the same tactic, because I take and defend. Bishop takes, knight g5. Yeah, I should take first. Yeah, so this pawn is poisonous. Knight g5 is kind of my first impression. And then bishop takes h3. Like a tempo. And there's bishop f5. Bishop f5, queen f6. The simple threat is to take the bishop and play bishop f5. And then the other idea, like if he plays bishop d3, the dream is to take, take, knight f3. Although I'm not sure if that works. King g2. I was thinking king h1, queen d6 could be powerful. King g2. There's a bishop f5, so I was looking at queen f6. I guess he would take, take. The knight's still restricted. Yeah, no staff or gambits today, unfortunately. Ben played d4 in both games. And then both games with white. <laughs> I played e4 in both games with white, but he played Sicilian, so what to do? I know people were asking for like some speedrun episode earlier, if I could like live stream the speedrun. I feel like these games are as if I reached like episode 100 of the speedrun, where my rapid rating is like higher and I'm playing uh, some stronger opposition. So he plays bishop g4. Attacking the knight. I mean... The natural line is to take and then knight f4. 
and then we trade off we trade a lot of things like take take i should have better structure in the end let's go for this I mean, if he could like somehow play d5 and trade off these pawns, then probably white's okay. But it seems like white has like some issue to address with this isolated queen's pawn. I'm also trying to provoke f3, yeah. Get him to break the rule of never play f3. Okay, so let's take... Some H3 potential. So he does play Queen F5. Okay, so this was kind of part of the calculation. I think I have to take... I mean, what else to do? My Queen's attacked and tied down to the Knight. 96 is a move. I like taking because it keeps initiative. Like after it takes, maybe I play H3. It was a weird move, f4, but then I take, should be okay. Queen d2 is another option, but looks a little bit artificial. <clears throat> so there, there. Yeah, f4 would kind of kick me back. So I'm calculating takes, takes, h3, f4, hg2, king, g2, knight, h7, and then, then d5. Does black have any advantage there? And I have six, take, take. And white has double f pawns, but that's not so clear. Another idea is to play something like rook e d8, but that allows rook e7. So take, take. Let's go. Let's go. But where to go? Take, take, h3, f4, take, king, take. d5 in the end. d5, we trade. As knight is kind of awkward on g5. So maybe knight e6 is like a... No, knight e6, rook takes e6, though. Knight e6 is just blundering. So queen... I look at queen d2. Now I feel like I, I have to take... But then what? Maybe I'm just not better here. If we trade... I'm calculating a line. Take, take, and then... I take on e1 and play rook d8. f4 and h7, rook e7, b5. The prospect of b5, b4 is kind of interesting. Let's go for this. Oh no, my Sunday night productivity. Oh no. Someone call a productivity coach. But not for me. <laughs> Welcome back, David. Okay, so I've conceded the e file. I'm allowing f4. But I'm targeting the d pawn and trying to prevent pawn d5. And if rook e7, then b5 with b4 ideas does look interesting. Okay, so he wants to play d5. So if I play b5, d5. Uh. Wait a minute, b5, d5, b4, take, doesn't work, wow. It's actually very hard to stop d5 now. I 
wondering if like g6 makes any sense take take here like king f7 take take it seems like it's heading for a draw b5 d5 i take Is there any way to target this pawn king e7 first d5 and then here maybe yeah maybe this It's equal material. We both have overextended pawns on the king side. Okay, so he wants to play f4, king h3. But I want to play this. King h2 was a good move. Okay, let's go into the side. I mean, the, the plan is to get the king involved. There's king g4 coming. My other option is knight f6 to sack the pawn. Play positionally. There. It's interesting. some b5 move too i think i go for this so even if he takes it's three on two but three pawns two of them are doubled i was calculating some line 95 take take threatening this and this although there's rookie one i think it's kind of a decision between b5 or knight d5 i don't have much time and this keeps the knights on the board i was thinking of b4 maybe i take take throw in the check force the king back and then rook a8 so then rook a3 would be threatening the pin then there's a funny line, king f2, rook a3, rook c1, I take, take, and fork, which probably is not going to happen. But if I get in this move, it would be nice. Okay, I mean, at least the first part of this line is happening. I've chased the king back. So now it's harder for white to actually get in. I, mean, I guess king f3 is a natural move. And then rook d3. So let's calculate. King f3 here, rook d3, and then knight. Oh, knight here can't be played. I have to play king d6 first. Oh, king d6 doesn't work either because knight still gives a check so i have to play king d7 wait so king f3 rook here rook d3 knight's pinned to the rook so i play king d7 and then the threat is knight d5 so he has to defend with king king e3 take I so badly want to play rook a3, but can't do it right away. I can play rook a1. He starts with rook d3. Yeah, he wants to play d5. Actually thinking that might make sense to get the knight to d5. Oh, that was 94, though.
G4. G4 is coming. Okay, Rook A1. Time is dwindling. Like, I'm down the pawn, but there's this weird positional compensation because he has double pawns and isolated pawns. Probably a three result game. Time is not great, as usual. I'm thinking of doing some maze. Like, if my rook can come to b3. Oh, he still has knight b5. Never mind. I was thinking knight e4, take, take, and then knight d2 would be the fork. Ooh, fancy. I should trade and play rook. He wants to play rook g3, though. To take. I think I check first. Ah, he has rookie three. Okay, we'll go into the sign. Who knows what's happening? C five. Here, probably king here. It might be a draw. Some weird repetition. Unless, can I somehow play for a win? Maybe not the best decision there. Um, I don't see how I can win this. If anything, his pawns are more dangerous. He might play for a win, actually. Do I want to play for a win? Okay. <laughs> yeah, white is uh white can definitely play for a win somehow, right? Like rook a8 apparently. Oh, maybe it's okay, engine. If you give the engine enough time to think it's a draw. Earlier? Okay. So Ben wins the match, three to one. We had four hard fought games. I think we'll we'll chat a little bit. Hello. Okay, now let me fix it. Yeah, I have to fix mine too, actually. Let's okay, see. and then people are gonna say they can't hear you. Right. For some reason, when somebody calls our Zoom, nobody can ever hear them very well, and we do all we can for the settings, but nothing works unless you have an idea. If I'm quiet for your stream, then you have to raise my levels, which sometimes requires putting a gain filter in OBS. That's something Karen probably knows how to do. Why well, raise the levels, but uh, when that, everybody says they can't hear. They're claiming uh, they hear you fine. Okay. Oh, that's that's perfect then. You said you're quiet, but I don't think that's because it's the volume's low. Probably not. Yeah, I'll just try and speak a little bit louder then. <laughs> Yeah, because I always speak so loud, everybody can hear it on both streams. We don't even have to zoom. That's that's how loud I am. Yeah, you can just uh, yeah have my mic. Open. I was worried before the match I was going to lose four zero. 
I was excited coming into the match. I, I was ready to like beat you four zero, and then all of no, a sudden, I was ready to lose four zero. Yeah, I think we had similar expectations, but That's you good. you fought well. Yeah, I do that. I can I can fight well. Okay, so yeah, you're on my stream. I don't know if I'm on your stream. I'm I'm on. Uh, you're you're everywhere. You're on both of our streams now. I think. Yeah, and you're on both of our streams. Yes. Unless yes. you're not on your stream, I can't prove it. <clears throat> I I can prove it. I think. Yeah. So. Okay. So, what did you think of game one? How dead winning were you? The most dead winning or second most? So the funny thing is, like before we started the match, I was sharing yeah. the game that we played back in 2016, yeah, where I was like, telling you that. I was crushing you, and then you kept surviving and like somehow tricked me, and I feel like the same exact <laughs> is this a thing slow happened. Game you're talking about? Yeah, the game we played in St. Louis. Yeah, yeah, that's the game where I played B5. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And you, you just lost a few pawns. And then you blunder in the end game or something. And even like during my game, I was saying that, uh, yeah, you're like, you're so tricky in coming back from very bad positions. Mm -hmm. And something went like very wrong for me. <laughs> but I was so surprised you like you walked into this opening trap because I know you've you've played against yeah, this before. Yeah, in my chessable course, I, I don't know what I did against Bishop C4. Uh, also, I can't remember. I'm writing it now, but I can't remember what I wrote. You have a chessboard course in Sicilian? or Yeah, it's coming out next month. Oh, I didn't know that. I know you have one on uh, like D4 for white. Yeah, and I know that you can play knight takes bishop, and I recommended not to do that. But to be honest, I can't remember what I recommended. Yeah. I mean, instead of E6, like the more trendy line is E6. Or uh, inside of G six, after um, after knight f three, you can play e six. Oh, e six. I mean, it's probably in my chessable course. I just yeah. forgot because it's you know it's big, so I can't remember stuff. It happened like three months ago. Right. Yeah. Because so I'm just completely lost after after what? I'm lost immediately. E six is already like a big mistake because knight b five, and it's so hard for black to defend. Wait, what? Did, what did I do? You played bishop c4. What move? I played g6. Yes. Oh, oh. So after knight takes, pawn takes, queen f3, what am I supposed to do? So supposedly the best move is knight h6. I thought about that, but I thought, oh, if I if you play d3, I can castle. So yeah, d like I would have played knight e2. D3 is, of course, coming very soon. Yeah, and... I didn't see queen a3, even though I've seen it before. Like, I've seen this trap. I just gotcha. don't remember it. Okay. I saw it before you were born, probably. Probably. Yeah, I only discovered it like 10 years ago. So, yeah. It's it's a common one that players can stumble into. Yeah, I'm going to analyze all the games uh, myself trying to learn when, when we're done with this call. Nice. Nice. So, I got really lucky that game. It seemed like you had less time than me, like the last 20 moves of both all four games. Yeah, well, I got good positions and I was trying to be precise. And then that was kind of the beginning of my downfall was I took so mm -hmm. much time and then just blundered in, in time pressure. I think with the second game, I also got like pretty deep opening prep. With, I prepared uh, by drinking iced tea and I had Thai food today. Oh, uh, that sounds like better preparation than what I did. Of, when, of if you remember, which you don't, the Kings versus Queens event in 2011 or 12, where the men played the women at the St. Louis Chess St. Louis, Club. yeah, I remember the concept of yeah. that event. Anyway, my preparation to play the women in Chess 960 uh -huh. was play fast. Mm. Because it was game 25, increment 5, and I'd never played 960 before. Gotcha. So I was like, I'm going to play fast. So I played fast every game. That's and the strategy. women were preparing, but I don't know how you prepare for 960. But anyway, so I went 5-0 and in the 960. Wow. I played faster than my opponents every game. And there were instances where I had 20 minutes and they had one minute. Wow. Like they're thinking forever on every move, and I literally didn't care, although I figuratively did. But Anon taught me that. Like when it's a fast time control, you can't play too fast. I guess that's true. Like he was playing right. game 30s in five minutes. Wow. And then his opponents were under tremendous pressure, even though obviously he plays 10 times better than I do at that speed. 
Well, nine nine sixty, it's even more extreme because a lot of players start taking time as early as like the first few right. moves. I told myself not to do that. Yeah, it sounds like I actually a good if strategy. I had a big time advantage, I could win. Yeah, I spent so much time in our second game, like trying to remember my preparation after like this whole E five line. Because you you played one of the more critical approaches. Oh yeah, I didn't. After E five, I was on my own. Yeah, I, I checked your like opening tree last night. I saw you've you've played this line maybe about ten times online, but you've mm -hmm. never encountered E five. Like you've encountered all the other moves like casting and DC four. Right. Yeah. And I have a chessable course on this too, but right. I don't know if I mentioned E five or I didn't. I forgot because that was a year ago. I see. Yeah, E five. It's yeah. like maybe the fifth For most popular people in my chat who are confused i'm going to go over all this after we talk so okay. don't worry about it no i'll tell you what eric said and yeah, yeah, yeah i thought you th somebody in my chat when we took the break said in the second game you were 2.2 at some point yeah that's probably about right although you were very resourceful with rook d4 yeah i was um, going to play rook d i didn't see the strength of rook d8 so i was hoping you were going to play bishop b4 attacking my rook rook d4 bishop c5 and i was going to leave it there ah i see but then when you played rook d8 i was like man all moves are bad so well there's kind of an instructive trick with rook d8 that at first it looks like you can just take on d8 and if i take back you have bishop d3 and then everything appears to be okay Mm -hmm. The problem is when you take on d8, I don't take back immediately. I throw in queen a1, uh, queen b1, we trade queens, and then I take back. Mm -hmm. And then you can't develop your bishop. That doesn't look good. Yeah. 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 So um, so I think you were you were right in playing rook d4 of like getting the bishop pair for later on. Yeah, and then it was just sort of tricky. Yeah, and then I overlooked D five later, and then you just obviously you're like the third game. I think I'm better the whole game until I'm losing. Right, I, I totally blunder with Bishop C five. I didn't see whatever move you made. Bishop C four, I just missed it. Oh, Bishop, yeah, my Bishop found a much I happier diagonal. Bishop. I mean, maybe I shouldn't play this way and just like draw the game by doing nothing, but right. I couldn't help. It. But I thought I was better, but maybe you don't agree. No, I totally agree. Like you were, I had yeah. nothing on the king side, and you had a full right. full attack on the queen side, like a dream position for black. But it's hard to actually crack. I think. Yeah, I couldn't cra crash through. Yeah, like when you yeah, no, no. when you yeah, did so, crash through, it turned out to be better for me. <laughs> right, but then the, I I found that when you played bishop c4, I was like, damn it. Then I was like, oh, this piece sack is interesting if he takes it because my pawn's on the seventh. Yeah, and I couldn't quite do anything to your king. It's funny that I played GH, H4, H3. That's crazy. Yeah, I was regretting like not just taking on G6 or even playing H6. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then put it in H. Yeah, I should have put it in H, but Yeah, all the all the super GMs always play H6. Well, my dream earlier in the game was to play H6 and trap your bishop on H8. Like right. there were some That's alternates. Why I played Rook FC8. Alternate yeah. universe, yeah, yeah, like you were, you were I wise to play to... like D to E six, so exactly. I could block my. Yeah. Yeah. And then the final well, game, I think, was a, the highest Karen quality. Will, you'll email Karen, and she'll email you and tell you how much you won, and uh, you, you guys will discuss how she sends it to you. Oh yeah, yeah. Big thanks to the sponsors too. I saw. Yeah, um, go sponsors. A good number of Without sponsors. Without you, Eric would have won for sure. But you know, yeah, I, I saw I the money more than Eric, so I played harder. I saw like one of the main sponsors was the uh, the Eric Rosen School for Anger Management. So I'm glad right. they, they could insisted support. that be the name we use for their for their donation. I, I figured, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have to maybe take a refresher after uh, after this match on anger management. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you don't get angry, do you? Ever? Um, yeah, I. I'm able to control it. Um, yeah. So you yeah, have the bottles up inside. People. Yeah. You don't break your mouse and your keyboard and stuff. Not, not yet. No. It says you were up 4.35 in the first game. Wow. I'm, not, I'm surprised you were not more. Yeah. I'm surprised like it wasn't plus 20 yeah, right. or something. I just thought like after like eight moves, I thought I was going to lose. Yeah. Hey, do you guys have any questions for Eric from my stream? 
likewise for Ben on my stream. <laughs> the, the the big question is Eric lost double question mark. I, I Some have people a lot just of viewers because I'm on Chess TV right now. Ah, shout out to Chess TV. Yeah, chess.com mm -hmm. slash TV. Ah, I see you. So there's like a whole separate chat on chess.com too. Yeah, one of the one of the sponsors asked, "What's your favorite flavor of ice cream?" It depends on the ice cream place. Probably like cookie dough or cookies and cream or mint chocolate chip. There's a few I would cycle through. Mm -hmm. I haven't had ice cream in a while, though. It's oh, getting yeah. cold. Somebody asked a question I want to ask you. Okay. When I played Queen F5 yeah. in the last game, you thought like two minutes. And I, I thought you had to trade queens. I saw no other move. What else, what else were you going to do? Oh, I was just calculating the resulting line. I should have just taken immediately. I, I was like, is he going to make another move? What is it? What's his other move? Well, at first I thought like, okay, maybe knight e6 is an option. But then I realized you just have rook takes e6. Yeah. And then I also thought, oh, maybe queen d2 is playable. So rook d1 win? Oh, does rook d1 just win? That's what I thought. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I should have just taken on f5. Yeah, I was like, there's a two-minute thing here. I've already pre-moved yeah. GF. What's going on? Yeah, the thing is, like, after pawn digs f5, then I have options. Like, I was debating whether to take on e1 right, yeah. or play rook d8 or h3. Mm -hmm. So um not sure if I made the right decision, but okay, apparently Somebody asked wrong. a real question. Is Eric going for GM title anytime soon? Uh, no. I get that question all the time, but... I, I don't have any norms. My rating is 2360 Fide. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I had a good tournament recently in Qatar. I Aren't you like super points. underrated? Shouldn't you be like 2450 Fide? Um, I I wish. I don't know. Like on, on good days, I can play well, but on bad days, I can play badly. So yeah, um, the truth hurts. I still like playing chess though. Like I've, I played five classical over the board tournaments this year. Uh, I'll probably play and a few next year. Was really good. I mean, the last tournament was my first time playing in the same section as Magnus and Hikaru. Oh, you played and the Qatar Open. Yeah, you were a Qatar hero. I I tried to be. I I played up every single game. I was like seeded one thirty out of one sixty. Yeah, I was watching your your games live. I was rooting for you. Oh, nice. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I scored five out of nine. Um, so it was a nice tournament. Yeah. So I'm going to try and seek out tournaments like that in the future. Maybe if, if I get like one GM norm, maybe that will be motivation. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, I'll so. let you go and I'll analyze my games and see how lost I was all the time. Okay, all right. Sounds good. Well, have fun. All right. Thanks, yeah, everyone. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Be in yeah. touch. See you. Yeah. yeah, big shout out to Ben and Karen. Twitch.tv slash it's Ben and Karen. Also chess.com slash TV. He's uh he's embedded. What's your favorite Ben quote? How many Ben quotes did I say throughout the the match? Never play F3, never play F6, always play King B1. Trying is a first step to failure. Fries. I didn't say fries. I don't think I said terrible. We didn't have any knives F5. Knife f5, knife f4. The only, so the two games I lost, those were the only games I played f3 for white or f6 for black. The next two games, I don't think I, I played such moves. So maybe it's karma. In the third game, why didn't you take on b2 after bishop takes d4? All right, I'll answer questions for a brief moment. Game number three. Take on B2. Oh, so much later. I was scared of Rook D3. Like if I take with the... So first of all, if I take with the Rook, then my Bishop's just hanging. Uh, Like takes, takes, and... Yeah, this should be a draw. If I take with Bishop... I had 10 seconds. And I wasn't sure about this line. It's probably 
probably fine for white though. It was just hard to judge from a distance. Because I have to choose where to put the king. King g2 runs into this, and then rook d2. Probably king h2. But then still this. And it's kind of scary. Maybe it's winning according to the engine. Let's see. Oh, engine doesn't find a clear win. Bishop b2 is one of the better moves, though. King h4, best move. <laughs> uh, King h4 is kind of random. So bishop takes b2. Rook takes d3. Yeah, I'd have to, like... It's so counterintuitive to put the king there. Oh, then black has to play... Wow, has this move. Wait, what is this position? Takes, takes. Rook d1, king e8. Yeah, this should be winning, although the king's getting to... Black can just wait here. Anyway, people are welcome to analyze these games. Uh, I'm sure we could dig very deep with the engine. How out of how... How many out of country? Oh, how many out of country tournaments? So, how many international tournaments do you travel to in the typical year? So, yeah, this year I traveled to, let's start early on. So, it was Norway and then Iceland. And then, okay, Vegas was a, a domestic tournament. And Switzerland and Qatar. So I, I played five classical tournaments this year, four outside the US. Why didn't you play F5? F5 on move or game three? Ah. Uh, yeah, some F5 is very double edged because. On one hand, it does try and break through, but it does kind of concede the dark squares. It gives away the e5 square. So f5 here. It's playable. And then here, maybe. <clears throat> yeah, maybe here is a better option. There's just different plans to go for. I guess here, I played g5 to prevent f5, but maybe here it's a bit more justified. Oh yeah, I played the uh, chess tennis event in Germany too. Wasn't quite a, a standard tournament though. At what age were you 1800? Age, age 11, I think? Because by age 12, I hit 2,000. What's the next tournament you're playing in? I don't know. Yeah, I actually don't know. Um, maybe something in 2024, hopefully. Oh, for Ben. Yeah, if f5 here, then I can take. And the king's side kind of opens up in my favor. Um, of course it's playable, but I think this is a bit more pleasant. Like h4, bishop h3, e6 is a bit weaker, h5 coming. So, um, yeah, let's send the raid to its Ben and Karen. Okay, final question from Shwarma. Which game are you more proud of? The one you beat Magnus without knowing it was him? Or the one, oh, the one against Akaru? Not sure. Probably against Magnus. Yeah, like the Hikaru game, I did trick him, but it wasn't the highest quality game. Against Magnus, it was like cool because it was my first time playing Magnus and not knowing I was playing him. Okay. There we go. Oh, earlier. Yeah, this is why move numbers help. F5 here is possible. Um... Maybe I would leave the tension. 
maybe I would take this way. Yeah, definitely a playable move. So um, I'll be back in the future.